we worked on number one. We didn't do anything to the other one. This one needed to catch up to the other one. This one was about 40 behind, mm -hmm. 40 rounds behind. So this is, if you guys remember, this is the one that was three and a half MOA on the first outing. Yep. Put in the Oryx and it went to, what, like one and a half, one and a half MOA-ish. And uh, today we threw a tuner brake on there and we're going to go to the range and see if it gets any better. The chassis alone made it handle a lot better. A night and day difference on with the chassis and being comfortable behind the rifle. So I imagine the brake alone is going to make it a lot easier to handle. So we'll see. Definitely. Still doing burger ammo. Nothing special. Well, I guess it's pretty special. It's <laughs> I guess anything you can find right now is special. Anyway, enough of that. Let's go to the range, find out what you can do. Five. What do you think? It just <laughs> keeps getting better. This is amazing. I mean, truly amazing. Uh, that tuner break made a huge difference. Very. We got, we, we have the targets. Well, let's not even go over the targets. You don't want to go? Oh, no. all right, fine. What do you want to talk about? Well, that's the tuner aspect. Let's talk about the brake aspect. All right, go ahead. So for, right off the bat, like um, the Fowler shots and actually dialing in the zero on, on the target and follow through was getting maybe like 0.7 to a mil of jump. Okay. Meaning if I'm holding center pull, it would be, you know, a mil ish yeah. high, uh -huh. which is, you know, um, typical because you can still follow through. You can see your shot coming in if it's a good trace day. Right. You can see uh, impacts um, on still or your target. Uh, and that is uh, the huge, huge improvement because now you're, you're, you, your foundation, your follow through, all your principles are, are gonna be solid with the gun behaving and just being settled after each shot. Well, I also noticed that, I mean, you could just lay there and just yep. drill them in there. Like, there's, there's no there's fighting no, the gun at no all. No fighting, no resetting, no nothing. Just, you stayed put and just sent them. Now, <sighs> barrel heat. It gets hot quick. It gets hot, however, you just kept on trucking and it it did just fine. I mean, I'm not, for a hunting uh, application, this thing is more than adequate. I mean, oh, definitely. you were doing 
I think you did uh, seven in a row. Mm -hmm. You made a, you did a group of seven, and it was, and we're gonna show you that here shortly. But anyway, so the brake obviously huge difference. Follow through, just the gun just stays there, and you're able to just squeeze your bag and that's it. Work that bolt. Can we look at the groups now? We can look at the groups. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is the EC Tuner brake. It's a great product. It's amazing. If I may say so myself. Anyway. This is just the siding group. Nothing, ex nothing special. Until we get here. Until we get to here. So, obviously, we had to thread the barrel. So, threw in the lathe, recrowned, and threaded 5H24. Now, this is a pretty thin barrel, but we just had enough that we could get 5H24 on here. Put it on there. Got it nice and tight, and uh, headed to the range. Obviously. The barrel gets cleaned every time, mm -hmm. every time. Uh, some people have mentioned that we should leave the copper in. No, get it, everything, get it out of there. Uh, you wanna, you wanna start with the same, you, you know, you want baseline, right? So you want consistency. So get it clean every time. I don't believe in that, you know, keep it dirty. Uh, I've never, anyway, whatever. We're not gonna get into that right now. The point is the barrel was clean. Five shots to get it fouled and make sure, because uh, you know, with the brake, make sure it was uh, on target. And then let it cool down for like three minutes, just as long as it took to load the mag. Yep. And then we started doing, or Jason was, uh, he was uh, doing two shot groups. And then I would come in and move the tuner for him so he wouldn't have to break position. So 12 mm -hmm. shots. Non-stop, just stop long enough for me to turn the tuner and then he'd get back to work. Anyway, here are the results. This is zero. Like it's a setting zero, but it's also the group is zero. It, we cannot measure. It, it looks like one. <laughs> and that was the first one. That was with the tuner at zero. Sometimes the harmonics just line up in such a way that right when you put it on, you're done, right? However, we kept going anyway. And as you can see, two, it opened up some, four kind of came together, six came together, uh, and so on and so forth. So 10, you can see starts to open up again. If we had kept going, it would have come in again. You know, it just kind of continues that cycle. So we decided to just go back to zero. And then he went and did this is seven shots right here. We measured it, 550 thousandths. This is seven shots, not five, seven, just because that's how much you had left in the mag. Yep. So he just shot those seven. And I'm gonna I'm gonna show you right now how, how fast he shot them. There was no waiting around, nothing. I mean, he he, he put them in there. 550 thousandths. This is a half MOA rifle. That's, I mean, pretty much went as fast as I could work the bolt. Factory ammunition. Okay, but you know, a hundred yards. It's a hundred yards. As good as it looked, because as you can see, this is this is all horizontal. So, and again, he was shooting really fast. I think if he had shot slower, he could have shrunk that group. Either way, the point is, this is what we have. So, we decided, let's go. Let's go shoot the KYL. So we went to 460, is that what it was? Yeah, 450. 450. 450 yards, because we still needed to catch this one up to the other one anyway, so we had, what, 20 rounds to 20, shoot? 20 more rounds to shoot. So we went up there, 450 yards, and this is what happened. In fact, <laughs> dead center too. Impact. Oh, are you going to try to run the whole thing? Impact. Oh, missed right. Impact. Impact. Holy crap. Oh, miss right. Oh. 
<laughs> That's awesome! That's awesome! I've watched Trace on every single person. I know! I it, 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 well, I mean, I guess I don't know. <laughs> I saw it on the other. That was pretty impressive, man. Good job. So, that's what we have. Just a Oryx and a tuna break. So I guess Remington doesn't suck after all. No, they did pretty good. Did pretty good. And both misses were wind. Were wind. Yeah, they were both right. I saw the trace through the spotting scope. Because, I mean, this is ultimately a, a Remington SPS, right? And now we're, Jason just cleaned the KYO rack at 450 yards without verifying anything other than speed. Mm -hmm. We used the BC from the box. Uh, and, well, you saw what he, I mean, the, the, the smallest target is uh, two inches. So it's sub half MOA at, you know, at 450 yards. So anyway. So Clay, we decided to say, you know what? We need, we need to put some more rounds to this thing. Go ahead. He missed the last shot, wind, but I mean that that you can't blame that on the rifle. It's this thing is has exceeded my expectations, wow. especially when we started with the three and a half MOE gun, and we haven't really done much to it if you think about it. Chassis, tune and break. That's it. That's it. It hasn't been bedded. Nothing. Just chassis and tune and break. That's it. <laughs> So technically, without the scope, we have 650 or 600, whatever. Let's say 650 plus 450. That's 1,100 bucks. Plus your 250 plus or what are they? 225 plus your, uh, you know, you gotta have to pay somebody to thread your barrel for you. Let's say 300 bucks. You're at 1,400 minus, you know, you still gotta add the optics. But you got a half MOE gun capable of cleaning a KYO rack at 450 yards. Yep. I don't know what else to do to this thing. I mean, three and a half inch groups to half inch groups. Two half. Seven, that's a seven shot group too. If you had stopped at three, it would have been tiny. Or, you know what I mean? Yep. But, uh, because he and just... Then, and then it performed uh, out. You know, well, yeah, not only, so it's not a fluke, right? Because then we went out to 450, and you saw what he did twice. Two different shooters. Where do we go from here? I mean, at this make point, it more easy to shoot. Right? Yeah, that's Trigger. it. We can't, I don't know that we can make it shoot any better at this point, just maybe more comfortable to shoot. Yeah. So trigger, I mean, that's the comments everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people said, yeah, trigger is one of the most common upgrades, and they are. I think that would make this a little bit more enjoyable to shoot. Uh, maybe a thread that bolt handle and put a bigger bolt handle, make it easier to cycle. Yeah. But I mean, this is just purely, purely uh, cosmetic and, and for comfort. I mean, I think this thing's ready to go. I would, I would call this done. I would too.
I mean, what? With that, with just keeping it at factory ammo, what more can we do? You know, reload, it's tune. And the next step after we put a trigger in, and I mean, the trigger's not. Oh no, springs. Bolt spring. Bolt springs. Well, we can change the bolt springs. So we can do a bolt spring. So let's. You want to focus on the bolt, man? Um, bolt spring. It, it's and it's bolt handle. Bolt handle, bolt spring, and then T. You know, is that going to affect group size? It has the potential to, because if you have, you know, a delay in your firing system because of drag on the spring or anything, it, that can affect, you know, the round cook, uh, the muzzle velocity, the ES and SD numbers, stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people keep asking about bolt lug contact. This is actually pretty good. Anyway, uh, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm very happy with how it performs and definitely exceeded my expectations up to this point. Way beyond. I never thought we'd have a half and way shooter that can clean a KYL rack at 450 yards the way this one did it. And it did it almost twice. And uh, the, the second one, I'm going to... It, that's a very small target. We can't even guarantee with our custom rifles to clean it every time. So it, it's different. You can't see the target. <laughs> no, no, it's tiny. So anyway, uh, I don't know. What do we do with the other one? <laughs> I mean, this one's pretty much done. Trigger. It, it is. I mean, the, like we were discussing, you know, the control group is the. It, it's con the control. It, we know the group, it's consistently shooting the same size group no matter what we've done to it before, so. Yeah, the other one's about a three quarter MOA, which is not bad. No, it's not. Factory ammo. Yeah. Okay. Trigger. Trigger. Bolt handle. Trigger, bolt handle, springs. And, and bolt spring. Yeah. I always replace a bolt spring just to make sure, but I mean, this one's doing well. All right, what are we doing with the other one? Because I mean, we, uh, we could just do the same thing, but then what? I mean, nice. somebody wants to spend fifteen hundred dollars. Here, you, here you go. Uh, this is a heck of a, this is a heck of a deal. I say we throw it back in the stock, stock. In, the, in the original stock, and thread it and throw a tuner break on it. Okay. See, yeah. See there's no need to keep it. Below. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see if we can do a, because if we do that, we would save about four hundred dollars mm -hmm. because you know. It's gonna cost you about 50 bucks if you do it yourself to, to pillar bed uh, that other one and bed the recoil load. So, yeah, so we could, man, if we can get that one, <laughs> if it performs as good as this one for under, we'll be up about $800 with the other one. Yeah, that's it, under a thousand bucks. Yeah. I mean, this is under fifteen hundred. Okay. You know, mine plus the plus the optics. All right, I'm happy. It's fun to shoot now. So, I guess are we gonna hand load for this thing at some point, or just leave it, let it be? Oh, uh, it. How far do we want to take it? I mean, there's once we do the trigger and the springs. Yeah, the they bolt work. handle. That's it. Oh, another thing. A lot of people have suggested that I blueprint this action. In order to blueprint the action, you need to remove or replace the barrel. Because in order to blueprint, you have to make it bigger. So this barrel would no longer work. So the only reason I would blueprint the action is if I went or we went to an aftermarket barrel, which I'm not sure that we need to. I mean, you're, you're getting the, the defeating the purpose of trying to keep it stock and do it on the cheap, you know? Yeah. So, the other one, throw it back in the factory stock, throw yep. a tuner brake on there, see how it does. And then, depending how it does, then we can later throw it on a, on a Oryx chassis and see if it improves. Yep. Uh, and if it performs like this one, then we can set them up the same identical and then you and I can go 
do a little head to head. Jill. <laughs> All right, man. There you have it. <laughs> this is awesome. Thank you. Keep them centered. Have a good one. And I mean, I'm feeling me. Gonna make an ugly scene. Tonight I'm feeling.